we are privileged to present to you Friends of Eternity, a special gathering with Supreme Master Ching Hai and Cherish Artists, Part 20. Our next guest is the Emmy Award-winning singer-songwriter Faith Rivera. She has perfected the art of using lyrics and melodies to heal the heart and lift the spirit. Miss Rivera was a special guest star in musical The Real Love based on Supreme Master Ching Hai's life story. She couldn't be here in person, but she still wanted to perform for us via video. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, Faith Rivera. Yeah. Oh, I love her. Aloha, oh. Supreme Master. Well, she looks different today. And all of you beautiful friends. I am sorry I'm not with you there in person, but I'm sending my love, my aloha here from Hawaii. And I just want to thank you for being a presence of light and love on our planet and for being a part of the rise, the expansion, the evolution that is taking place. And it's all because of you and all of us. So hugs and aloha till next time. Aloha. Enjoy this song. Aloha. <laughs> thank you. Supreme Master, thank you for being such a force for good, a force for love, a force for light in this world, and for oh. inviting all of us to join you oh, in this work that you do that is all about beautiful. rising, rising, and rising to the next level of light and love. Thank you. Love, love. Hug, hug. <laughs>
beautiful lyric, hey? Beautiful. Very uplifting. She must be pretty enlightened. <laughs> How about another round of applause for generous, talented Faith Rivera? Academy Award nominee Stuart Sender is a brilliant documentary filmmaker whose work has taken him around the world as he explores important subjects like human rights and climate change. Our wonderful friend will now tell us about one of his very meaningful projects. Please welcome Stuart Sender to the stage. Uh, it's so lovely to be with all of you. Thank you. A week ago Friday, I was on the streets of Los Angeles with my daughter Emily, who's 21, and thousands of young people who were part of the climate strike, the global climate strike that on that day brought four million people into the streets. And over the course of the week, totaled about seven and a half million. Wow. You know, and they were saying to us, they were asking and they were demanding, right? They were asking, why is it that we know what the science tells us, we know what we're doing to the planet, and yet we're still doing so much damage to our land, to our soil, to our personal health, oh, countless shoot. numbers of species around the world. Why? And they were saying, you know, to my generation in a certain way, you know, we're not, we're not going to tolerate this anymore. So on this evening, when we're celebrating so much talent and passion and love, I wanted to share just a couple of minutes of a project that I've been working on called Harmony, a new way of looking at our world. It's inspired by His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, Prince Charles, and we explore places around the world from organic farms in India and the United States and the United Kingdom to what's happening to steel workers as the world changes. You'll see some kind of rare and unusual footage of Prince Charles and former Vice President Al Gore talking about these issues all the way back in 1988. So again, I want to thank everyone for sharing so much talent. Um, and here's a clip from Harmony. Thanks. Thank you, thank you. I don't want my grandchildren, or yours, to come along and say, to me, why the hell didn't you do something about it? You knew what the problem was. I mean, that is what I really, really have, have, have worried about and what helped motivates me. When I started 22 years ago, as something that nobody really wanted to know about except a few people who thought it was pretty crazy. The ozone layer, marine pollution, toxic waste, acid rain, global warming, these rather fateful phrases have gradually become part of our daily lives. The difficulty it seems to me is how to achieve the kind of <clears throat> international cooperation that's necessary to, to tackle all these sort of problems. Uh, we don't have much uh, experience in putting together a global solution uh, to a problem of this magnitude. In fact, we have no experience of this sort, but we have to do it anyway. Representatives from nearly 200 nations will gather in Copenhagen to seek an agreement on a strategy to fight climate change. We live in times of great consequence and therefore of great opportunity. The Earth's alarm bells are ringing loudly. We face a future where there is a real prospect that if we fail the Earth, we fail humanity. So we have to confront the challenges we face. This is a call to action. We have lost something very precious, and that is an understanding of our interconnectedness with nature and a world beyond the material. It doesn't matter what country you're from 
or what your belief system is, what your religion is, what your politics are. We are all living on the same very small planet. We have this extraordinary ability to be connected to the inner patterns of nature, which is really what we call the spiritual, because there is an urgent crying need to reconnect with that relationship again, with, with the things that are actually sacred. The only way everything can work together is if you have the circle going, because everything is connected to everything. Reducing poverty, increasing food production, and sustaining economic development are all vital priorities. It's not that we don't want to be good environmentalists, but we, we also want to have a business that's viable. We cannot sustain our human economy without sustaining nature's economy. There is a whole picture here about the way in which we not only treat the world around us, but also ourselves. Just as mankind had the power to push the world to the brink, so too do we have the power to bring it back into balance. There's so much beauty to celebrate. There's so much quality in the world. There's such humanity in people. I think we just have to open our eyes to it. Take a moment to consider the opportunities if we succeed. Imagine a healthier, safer, and more sustainable, economically robust world. Living green really doesn't take a whole lot. It just takes a little bit of respect for what Mother Nature provides for you, not to destroy, not take more than what you really need, you know? Deep down, I suspect, there are many who feel uneasy, they feel anxious, they they can't see how the future is going to work out. They worry about their children, their grandchildren's future, but they feel powerless to do anything about it. How can you actually provide a, a genuine and believable alternative that actually would enhance people's lives and allow the sense of meaning and belonging to, to reappear? We can do this. We can do this, but I don't think we can do it alone. All I want to do with this is try to strike a chord in people's hearts, because I know it's there still. And when they discover it, it revolutionizes life, I think. Wow, thank you. Thank you. That's precious, precious. Thank you. New way, eh? Yeah. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Sender, for sharing your important work. We look forward to a future which in all humans live in harmony with nature and the animals. Let's have another round of applause for Stuart Sender. Thank you, really, for caring. Uh, everyone does something, then we have hope. Supreme Master Ching. Our next guest speaker is a longtime friend of Supreme Master Television. Jane Velez Mitchell is an Emmy Award winning television journalist who had her own show on CNN. More recently, she founded the digital news network for animal rights and the vegan lifestyle called Jane Unchained. The title of her presentation today is Using Your Cell Phone to Create a Vegan World. Let's welcome Jane Velez Mitchell. Yeah, Miss Mitchell. Miss Heroine. How are you here? Supreme Master and Honor. When you said that you had trouble sleeping at night sometimes because yes. thinking about the animals, I have the same problem. Wow. And I love what you said. We're doing so much, and you are doing so much with Supreme Master Television, with the Loving Huts all around the world, with all of this. So thank you. And I am also trying to do my part, and that's what I want to talk about tonight. Jane Unchained is my social media news network for 
the animals, for people, for the planet, and it's filled with citizen journalists. And as I sat here tonight and looked around, I realized that every single one of you can become a citizen journalist for the animals, yes. for people, and the planet. Yes. Our mission is the same mission of Supreme Master. We want a vegan world. Does everybody here want a vegan world? And as I sat here, what I thought was, guess what? Right now, in this room, we have a vegan world. Yeah. Thanks to Supreme Master and all the folks here, what we need to do is take this spirit this mindset and spread it to the rest of the world. Yeah. Right? How are we going to do that? We have to hit the tipping point. And as Charles Dickens said, it's the best of times and the worst of times. A lot of good is happening with Beyond Meat and Impossible Foods, and yet we're still killing more animals than ever before. Drastic action and urgency is needed. Okay, uh. here is the challenge. There are 7.7 .7 billion humans killing and eating 74 billion land animals. So the obvious challenge is there are just too many people to talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. We have to do something else. Supreme Master Television is one way and a brilliant way. But we can also do something else. Okay, that brings me to this. How many people here own a cell phone? Raise your hands. Raise your hands, everyone who owns a cell phone. I own two. <laughs> you own two. Raise both hands. Thank you, Supreme Master. <laughs> your cell phone is your most powerful tool to change the world. Why? Because every single cell phone is a network, a network of people that you know. And so wherever you go, when you go live or you put it on Instagram or Facebook, you are literally bringing at least 100, sometimes 100,000 people with you. So go live, post, and share. If I leave you with one thing, these are our Los Angeles contributors. There I am, overexcited at a veg fest, holding a 20-pound bag of turmeric. I've gotten through a couple of tablespoons over a couple of years. <laughs> but that's just our LA team. We now have 70 contributors around the world going live just today. They went wow. live at a protest from Paris. They went live in San Francisco. They went live in Washington, D.C. They went live in Los Angeles. And I went live with you guys in Taiwan! Wow. So, it's a numbers game. Check out just some of the videos that we do. We do hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds every year because it's a question of content. You know, you have to tell somebody 12 times for it, it to even get in their brain. And that's why each and every one of you, and I'm talking to the folks on either side of the celebrity aisle mostly, you are the key to saving our planet. Because if you want to talk about climate change, the one thing that would reverse climate change right this second would be for every human being to simply stop eating animals and their byproducts. And we can make that happen. Wow. Okay, so there's just one example. We covered a protest in Times Square, and it got over 150,000 views. One thing you can cover is the SAVE movement. Check this out. Uh, this is an incredible movement founded by Anita Crines in Toronto to show people all over the world uh. who, who they are killing, who they are torturing, who they are maiming, who they are violating when they eat animals. And if there isn't a save here in Taiwan, please start one. The goal is to have a save vigil outside every slaughterhouse on the planet. There are already well over 600. And then when you go live, you supersize that as well by forcing people to see what they're really doing when they eat meat and dairy products. So the next slide, please, thank you shows um, a protest. You could see somebody going live there. That's Wayne Shung, the head of Direct Action Everywhere, who is a brilliant uh, lawyer, happens to be Chinese-American. Um, he organizes these incredible protests with many thousands of people. The mainstream media does not cover it. Does not cover it, even though there are thousands. 
And that's why I started Jane Unchained, and that's, I'm sure, why Supreme Master started Supreme Master Television. There's a news blackout on animal rights and veganism, and we've got to get around it. And all of you together can do that. This also, there was Anonymous for the Voiceless. Now, you can do fun things. It doesn't always have to be protests and vigils. Every time you make lunch or dinner or breakfast, you can go live using your cell phone. And I will just show you, there's a little thing called a stabilizer. And boom, look at that. Now you have professional video. And this costs under $100, okay, 60 bucks and you're suddenly a professional cinematographer, you should go live every time you have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or go to a vegan restaurant to spread the word about how delicious, I mean, the food here has been extraordinary. I wish I could go live on everybody making every dish at this event, because it's been unbelievably delicious. The whole world needs to see how delicious vegan food is, right? Yeah. Okay, we do a daily vegan cooking show. Super special guest on Lunch Break Live, Alexandra Paul. Okay, so Alexandra Paul is a famous actress from Baywatch. She's gotten arrested I don't know how many times for animals. She's my hero, and she's one of the many, many, many people who have appeared on our Lunch Break Lives. We do them every day, without exception. You can do your own Lunch Break Lives. Okay, so last year, Jane Unchained got 17.6 million video views for a total of almost 10 million minutes of videos viewed. So the reason I'm saying that is, you know, there's this worship of mainstream television. I was in mainstream television for 40 years. It's not always a million people watching. You know, on a bad day, it can be 30,000 people watching. So we do have the power to do the end run around mainstream media and get the word out to people using social media. It really is effective, and you can control the message. A lot of times we beg the mainstream media to come to a protest or a veg fest or an event, and the coverage they give is so slanted, it's almost not even worth it. So we can control the narrative when we, when we go live and use our cell phones. And believe you me, it's not that complicated. I mean, I just sat in front of a desk my whole life or was a reporter. I'm not a technician. If I can do it, everybody in this room can do it. All right, now we've also branched out to longer form. So Jane Unchained has its first documentary now exclusively on Amazon Prime called Countdown to Year Zero. And uh, Supreme Master, uh, the focus of Countdown to Year Zero is Dr. Silas Rao of climatehealers.org and Vegan World 2026. He is a genius. So Dr. Silas Rao has a plan to create a vegan world by 2026. And uh, I was so impressed because he set an intention, he set a by when, and he's a uh, systems analyst who is creating a methodology. He was, it, he was instrumental in uh, the acceleration of internet speeds. He is a brilliant mind and he, has, he is using the same methodology to create a vegan world by 2026. How many people would like to see a vegan world by 2026? Exactly. So here's just a little clip from the, uh, a trailer from uh, the, the documentary Countdown to Year Zero. If you get Amazon Prime, you can watch it. If not, you can go online and you can just put Countdown to Year Zero and you can watch it for either free if you're a member or 99 cents. I urge all of you to watch Countdown to Year Zero. Okay, next, let's see the clip. Thank you. The moral position is to resist this. And to end it. People need to know that this is the reality. What the problem? So we have a system that's based on you know, making money off death, disease, and destruction. Something that we have never, ever faced before. The, the trees are going up in flames. We have 10 years to turn it around. The earth is telling us we have to change. Inside of here is my daughter. I want her to have a good planet to live on. Not just a planet to live on, because this planet will survive us. This affects everything. That's the only way out that we have. That's the only way out where I see light. Yeah, that's the number one thing you can do to reduce climate change. And I totally recommend it. Yeah, it is historic. In 20, 30 years, you'll have all our friends hitting us up being like, yo, you're a visionary. It is a fight against ignorance and apathy. Moin! And Greta 
is a vegan. So finally, I'd like to play, we also have fun on Jane Unchained. I'd like to play our latest music video. Go vegan, go. Hit it. One of my dreams is to expand our Jade Unchained coverage to Taiwan. And so I was asking around if there was anyone who was willing to be a contributor with your permission. And I think we had someone. No problem, as long as it helps the animals and <laughs> the planet. You. I don't mind. I, I Please. Know, I know she was concerned because I've. Just after I talked to her and I said, you'd be perfect, she said, well, I work for Supreme Master. And I said, I will ask permission. Why? We work the and, same. And same. really, it's to jumpstart everybody. It's to jumpstart everybody doing this. Everybody. I'm giving you Jane Chain cap. Can you put it on? There you go. Hey, look and good. You, you can do it on your off hours. And also, here's a stabilizer. It's wow. just like this. And I'm so delighted that we're going to have videos. I said it's only a couple of times a month you need to do it. You know, go to a vegan restaurant, something. So we can include Taiwan and increasingly all of Asia in this effort. I know that the people in this room have the power to make the world go vegan. Use your phone. Are you ready to do it, people? Are you ready? Let me hear it. All you vegans. Are you ready? You can do it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for saving the animals and the world. Thank you. Good job. God bless you, Jane. Many thanks, compassionate Jane Velez Mitchell. That was so inspiring. Yes. She should Wasn't run it? for president also. Uh, yes, she, she says the woman <laughs> that we've seen just now. Yes. <laughs> so convincing. Vu Khan is one of Alex, also known as Vietnam's, most outstanding male vocalists. With his warm, deep tones, Mr. Vu Khan always makes his audience feel connected. For our special occasion, he will sing two beautiful Alex C songs. Please welcome Charming Vu Khan.
người ơi mẹ hiền du những câu xa vời à ơi tiếng du muôn đời tiếng nước tôi bốn ngàn năm dòng dã buồn vui khóc cười theo mệnh nước nổi trôi nước ơi tiếng nước tôi tiếng mẹ sinh từ lúc nằm nỗi Thoát ngàn năm thành tiếng lòng tôi được người tôi yêu tiếng ngang trời những câu hò giật hơn không nguôi nhớ nhung hoài mảnh tình xa xôi vững tin vào bầu đẻ ra đi mang theo quê hương của mỗi một người Việt Nam của chúng ta và rồi chúng ta gặp nhau ở nơi đây chúng tôi ước mong rằng chúng ta sẽ gặp nhau ở trên mọi nơi trên thế giới và xin cảm ơn thiền sư đã giúp chúng tôi được ngồi lại với nhau gần hơn
ruộng xanh người tốt bên nhà mình tôi đã nỡ như là là quá hoa ruộng xanh tươi tốt bên nhà lòng tôi đã nỡ Cảm ơn thiên sư, xin cảm ơn tất cả các quý vị. Thưa quý vị, trong cuộc đời đi hát suốt 35 năm, tôi chưa bao giờ thấy một người chủ tọa chương trình là thiền sư mà ngồi 6 tiếng đồng hồ hơn. Tôi sợ là thiền sư bỏ về, nhưng không ngờ thiền sư vẫn còn ngồi lại từ phút cuối này và thương yêu từng người một. Xin cảm ơn thiền sư rất nhiều. Hey, where did you go all this time? Everybody miss you. <laughs> miss your tattoos, I mean. <laughs> oh, what a brave spice girl. <laughs> she is spicy, that's why. <laughs> I just remember you just pull it up and then come out. So be big. Yeah, so beautiful. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have Carrie Walsh, a greatly accomplished soprano and flutist who has graced our stage of many of our association's concerts over the years. Today, she will be sharing a few words and performing for us with her charming son, Nishan. Let's give them both a very heartfelt warm welcome. So good that you played together. So good. <laughs> what a family relationship. So I, I wanted to um, thank you so much, Master, for, for acknowledging that it's special that I have my, my yeah. son here because it is very, very special. And every time I play with him, I, I feel just, it's just magical. It's the neatest thing in the world. <laughs> You are always so positive. Oh you, well, it's so special, and I feel I feel very uh, blessed that he. I, I you know I'm a little partial. I like music, so I'm pretty happy that he became a musician. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you met him, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we are we're really coming full circle here because the first uh, opportunity we had to meet was at the One World Peace. Uh, concert and that was 21 years ago. Yeah, I remember. So he was one year old. And, yeah, I know. And, <laughs> and ma right, Master held him in her arms, and he was so good. He was so quiet, and he was looking at her with his big eyes. Yeah, I was impressed because he he's so calm. He's right. Such a, you know, <laughs> you see people around him. He was always very calm. He used to yeah. go see me perform. He saw me in The King and I eight times. Oh, really? Yeah, eight times. And he used to sit there, and if anybody talked, you'd go, Shh, my mama is singing. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> he would go around saying, my mama is the best singer in the world. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> so, um, so uh, as, as I was saying earlier, uh, who would dream that I would still be here and have the honor of performing? But yes, I would dream that, actually, because it felt very natural and very right, and I was optimistic that we would still continue to have a relationship. And indeed, this is one of a number of, of times, a number of events for the TV and for the Love of Centuries and Cancun and, and lots of really fun stuff that we've gotten to do. And, uh, and I'll tell you a secret, Master, I have been dreaming for years of coming to see you in Formosa. Wow. I have been dreaming of that. Yes, I have. Now we all know your secret. That's my secret, <laughs> yes. How about me, Chan? You also have the same secret dream? Do you have some secret? Um, I don't know. I you don't just know. follow her, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm Mother knows best. Yeah. 
sure. Okay, welcome anyway. But there were times when I was uh, pretty sick over the years in between times when I saw you, and it would comfort me to look at the artwork and read your poems and watch videos and um, think in my mind that someday when I felt better I would be able to go visit, and uh, it came true. So I just feel this is absolutely spectacular, and what an evening and so much entertainment. You like both so, of you? Thank you. like you. it, Michan? Yeah. You also like it? Fantastic. Okay. That is great. So and the other so uh, happy to see him. It's so it's so great. Thank you. The other uh, full circle is that I'm going to be singing the song which you already uh, blessed your your audience with uh, earlier, uh, which is that uh, I will forever love you. And ah. so I feel a little shy about singing that. No, 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 no don't worry. <laughs> I always sing that whenever they want something for me. I just uh, sing that, so they stop. Oh well, <laughs> they stop asking things. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, well they're they're going to get um, we love that a, a reprise song. Everybody because does. we love that song. I love that song too. So this is going to be a little different version. Okay. Um, so I wanted to say something about um, to to sort of uh, expound on Elaine's uh, wonderful presentation about. Um, how to promote veganism and of course I'm trying to do my part and I go on Facebook and I'm sharing videos after I learned so much about reading from Crisis to Peace about uh, how the that, that you gave me in Cancun and you signed for me yeah. and I read it three times and I learned so much about how the, the meat industry and the dairy industry and and how toxic they are aside from the fact that they're inhumane and cruel to animals and everything that everybody has been saying all night about how we have to just stop eating meat or the world is going to implode, this is very, very true. And, and I think often about something else. Sometimes it's not a matter, I think, of having the capacity for empathy, but I think people sometimes have selective empathy. They choose who and what they want to feel compassionate towards. Mm -hmm. And uh, oftentimes it's sort of an, an us and theirs. You know, uh, our children and, oh, but those are their children or that's the children of another race or their, you know, so we don't care, they don't have feelings or we don't acknowledge that they have feelings. And so I feel a lot of compassion for my pet dog or cat, but I don't feel any compassion for the cow that I'm going to, you know, put on my table later or whatever. And I think... It's a good idea, and I pray about this, that people should grow and develop into the capacity of having empathy and compassion for all living things, for all animals and all people, regardless of where they are, what race they are, what status they are, what breed of animal they are. And I, uh, this came up, and I uh, had lunch with a member of the Chicago um, SMTV staff recently, and we were talking about this silly thing of me never killing bugs in the house. We always had a lot of bugs in Miami. And I would just talk to them in my mind, which sounds really ridiculous. But I would say, you really don't want to stay in here because somebody else is not as nice as me. And they might step on you with your, their shoe. <laughs> but I, I wouldn't want to do that. Or so I'd put them in a little container and take them back outside. And ants, you know, try to make them go away with cinnamon oil or something like that humane methods so even bugs I think they have feelings and they have sensitivity and they're worthy of our respect and of our compassion every living being and Master has spoken about how we're blessed and we get points and, and are blessed by so many living creatures in the universe and, and by the stars and by everything that exists and uh, I think that that's a really important um, message to take home because if more people were aware of that, then they would be more aware of the universe as a whole and all the components in it. And that's a hard thing to convey. It's a hard thing to convey individually or on Facebook or whatever, if you write a book, if you have a broadcast. Um, but it's, it's something to think about. And I think the more we embrace our thoughts and, and pray on them and meditate on them, somehow they will get out there. So this is one of my hopes, is that, that people will 
grow a grow some more compassion muscles and that eventually that will lead to more veganism and more humane treatment of our fellow humans and that's a that's a prayer for me so uh again i'm just so so happy to have this dream come true and i better stop talking because you know me i'm a crier <laughs> you know he's always making fun of me so i think i better stop talking before i get too weepy and uh, we're going to begin with a Bach sonata. Bach wrote six flute sonatas, and all of them are just exquisite. Of course, everything Bach wrote, he was a direct connection to God. My, my, Michan and I, we feel like Bach is pretty much God, right? That just, there's just a di direct line there. And we don't know, I don't know how any human being could write so many masterpieces of music and just so many one after another after another. So this is... Um, the flute sonata in E minor, Bach Verhel Verzeichnis um, 1034, the third movement, the Andante. And uh, after that, I'll say a little bit more about the song. So let's see how we're going to do this here. Wow. Okay. I like that. Thank you. 
Oh, oh I really love the sound. Thank you so much. It's so beautiful. The flute is so beautiful. Eh? Thank you. The sound is so beautiful. Thank you.